There's a few big decisions that could go into team building, and this video will show you the three most important considerations. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Summoner's War, and we're currently celebrating the 7th year anniversary where you can participate in a special coin event shop just by logging in daily and receiving huge rewards. And this is one of the most popular mobile hero collectors with over 100 million downloads worldwide. With more than a thousand unique monsters to collect, your very own sky island to customize, and the never-ending weekly events and dungeons to complete, there's a ton of things you can do in this content-rich game. And you can join a massive community with its own esports scene. And make sure to join the dance challenge by liking the official post, picking Maverick Rika's dance, and then uploading your video to Instagram or Facebook, and then finally sharing the link on the official post for a chance to win insane prizes like the new iPad. And for a limited time only, you can get 100 summons, no matter if you're a returning or a new player. So now is the best opportunity to download the game and also help support the channel. So don't miss out and make sure to download the game by checking out the link in the description. Thank you for your support. The big update of 1.5 is just around the corner, and after a lot of topics have been discussed already about it, there's one thing that's important to take a look at, and that would be the new domain we will be getting once the update goes live, and some of the things we will need to consider. And the first artifact set would be the tenacity of the Millilith, which is basically tailor-made for Zhongli specifically when it comes to the force set bonus, since maintaining the whole bonus comes from the pulsating damage from his pillars, even if he's not your active character. And while Albedo can kind of do the same thing with his solar isotoma, he doesn't really benefit in any way from the 2 set bonus, besides having more health. Now of course, the 2 set can also be equipped by Diona if you aren't using Noblesse Oblige on her or are still looking to build her, but aside from this, the new artifact set is pretty much going to be reserved for very few specific cases. Now on the other hand, the Pale Flame set is a lot more interesting and widely applicable when it comes to the amount of characters can use it, and the most obvious ones that come to mind would be Razor, Physical Fischl, as well as Rosaria and Zhongli if you decide to build him as your main damage dealer. And let's not forget Eula, which has been showcased to be a mix of cryo and physical damage dealer, but since we still don't know officially what will the cooldown time of our elemental skill will be, but it wouldn't make much sense to release this artifact set if it wouldn't synergize with a new character. And while for physical damage dealers, the two most popular artifact set choices is either the full set of gladiators or the mix of bloodstain and gladiators, this new one's potential without proper testing is still too early to tell from the practical approach, but as with everything in the game, depending on your situation, and the artifacts you already own, this is looking to be like a strong alternative to gladiators, which you can only obtain from beating bosses and opening abyss treasure chests. But the most important thing about this set would be the changes to the Spiral Abyss 11th floor, which is going to be getting a massive physical damage boost from the Leyline Disorder that basically rewards you for using normal and charged attacks, and since this new Pale Flame set is all about capitalizing on your physical damage output, it will go very well together with the whole 11th floor of the abyss. In other words, this is basically like the time the final abyss floor got boosted by the geo damage and made the element extremely powerful during that period, but this time around, the arrival of the new artifact set and the change to the floor bonus is going to have a huge impact on team building for those who want to clear the abyss with as many stars as possible. Either way, these two new artifact sets will be available from a single domain, and it's important to remember the random and unfair nature of how the drop rates work, so best case scenario would be to simply answer the question if you already have these and artifacts, or at the worst case scenario, just wait at least a couple of days before the initial reports come in on the practicality of these artifact sets and their potential. But besides the early impressions of the upcoming artifacts, now would be a good idea to look at the other critical factors that go into your team building and how things might look after 1.5 update. Let's face it, the whole idea about supporting isn't the most exciting thing when you could be instead creating massive burst attacks or causing destructive elemental reactions, but there is some merit to a little bit of patience and planning that can help you achieve this awesome damage output. And while it's been more than half a year since Genshin has been released, there aren't that many artifact sets purely meant for support even if we exclude the one that gets released with 1.5 update. And what's even worse about this is that 3 out of 4 support sets that you can use only have their 4 star versions available with the Noblesse Oblige being the only artifact set that you could obtain a 5 star version of. And luckily, well, this is considered to be one of the best artifact sets you can get your hands on. There's also the Exiles, Scholars, and Instructors, which all have a place and time in certain team compositions. And if you think about it, whenever you look at your team's artifacts, there's a high probability that the most common distribution is going to be an offensive artifact set for your main damage dealer, and then a mix of offensive and supportive artifacts for the rest of your team, with even less chance of 
of being pure offensive if you're able to manage a whole team of quick swap damage dealers, which is basically reserved for those who are very invested into the endgame team building. And out of all of those artifact sets, chances are Noblesse Oblige is going to be among them, as well as either Archaic Petra or Viridescent if you're using an Animo or Geo character, possibly even both for some situations. So this leaves us with the question, is there a place for Exiles, Scholars and Instructors, which can only be obtained as 4-star artifacts? And the answer is a strong yes. Energy Recharge is still a big deal for a lot of characters, and getting that sweet boost and faster burst generation is a very helpful thing to have, especially if you can deliver these burst attacks right after their cooldown ends. Now obviously, finding a place for these sets is more tricky, since two of them are focusing on better energy generation, while Instructors is more or less designed to work best with either Sucrose or Albedo, who are great elemental mastery boosters, but even then, this is a game that's about resource management, and everyone's situation is going to be unique, and some of you might have these artifact sets with great substats, which on their own could elevate your support team member. But the main takeaway here would be that even if Noblesse is the most dominant artifact set for support characters, it's important to acknowledge the lesser ones in a literal sense, since they don't have their 5-star versions, but still provide very decent set bonuses if you're transitioning from mid to end game, or can even work as a great alternative if you have these artifacts with good substats. Now if only Mihoyo would consider adding 5-star versions of these previously mentioned artifacts, and even some others like Gamblers, maybe then we could see even more different building options for our beloved support character roles. One of the most common strategies you'll find in any team building are the supporting characters and their role in providing some kind of boost that can either keep the team alive, make the party members deal more damage, and so on. And with the upcoming Zhongli banner rerun, it's time we take a look at some of the most important things when it comes to using support characters, especially those that provide insane amount of utility for the team. Now obviously, besides the characters' powerful talents, there's other things that can have an impact on them, like the past events we've seen of how Zhongli got first released and how the overwhelming response from the community became the main talking point about our Geo Archon, which later on influenced Mihoyo to take action and upgrade Zhongli in nearly every aspect. But after the dust has settled, the general consensus right now is that he's probably one of the best, if not the greatest characters you can get your hands on, and that's strictly because of how massive his shield support is, which can keep your team alive throughout the most nastiest of attacks, and some data we saw from the Chinese community has shown dominance of his usage on the final floor of the Abyss since the the enemies we were facing did not mess around when it came to delivering scary damage for your team. And that's only a surface level analysis we're looking at, while the more internal stuff happens behind the scenes, and the real kicker are the artifact sets for Geo and Animo, since more or less, the characters we use from these elements typically provide support with the exception of Xiao and Ningguang. And the main reason why Archaic Pecha and Viridescent Venerier are so influential would be thanks to the reruns of Venti and Zhongli and their strong support capabilities that can make these sets even more popular than they are, which overall spreads the awareness of support artifacts and their influence in team building. Now, both of these sets have their own drawbacks, like when using Viridescent, the application to reduce the enemy's resistance depends on the swirl reacting with the actual elements. You want to get the greater damage boost from the lowered resistance, which isn't the easiest thing to pull off, especially on some enemies who have their shields or when dealing with slimes. The same could also be said about Archaic Petra, which requires you to cause a crystallization reaction, and then afterwards you need to pick up the crystal from the ground with the character who has the set equipped to activate the team-wide elemental damage bonus, which requires some coordination and can cause a potential loss in damage output while you're trying to get the crystal off the ground. Still, even with these drawbacks, you're going to be getting a unique boost in damage that you won't find with any other elements besides Animo and Geo. However, once the new Millilith artifact set comes out, it's possible it might overshadow Archaic Petra, but that's only going to be a concern for those who will own the Geo Archon. Basically, building jungle or Venti together with one of the important artifact sets is a step in the right direction and can pave the way for other less popular choices for Animo and Geo characters that haven't seen the same spotlight from the player base, so characters like Albedo, Sucrose, and even the Traveler can get more recognition themselves, and then more of the community can become informed that Archaic Petra and Viridescent artifact sets can also work with characters besides the beloved Archons. The hunt for the best artifact piece is a never-ending journey, and discovering usefulness among the support artifact pieces you've been seeing can be a great way to boost your team's performance, which is why it was important to take a look at all the things we'll be dealing with when moving onwards from 1.5 update. But if you found this video useful or entertaining, then make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the bell notification on, and don't forget to gently press the like button. Thanks for sticking till the end of the video, and see you very soon.